Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with lambage rolls. Or is it lambage rolls? That's right, I can't even pronounce my own made up words. But regardless, these lamb and rice stuffed cabbage rolls were truly delicious and a lot easier to make than they look. So here we go. We're gonna start with a small saute pan with melted butter and olive oil on medium heat. And I'm gonna saute a half a diced onion. Save the other half, we're gonna use it. And I know that looks like a lot of butter and olive oil, but our ground lamb is very lean, so we need that fat. As soon as the onions start to turn translucent, I'm gonna add some crushed garlic. I'm gonna cook that for about a minute. So we're not browning these, we're just kind of softening them up a little bit. At that point, I'm gonna turn off the heat and we're gonna go ahead and add our various herbs and spices into the hot oil butter onion mixture. So I have some freshly ground black pepper, some cayenne, some cinnamon, some cumin, and a little bit of dry oregano, all right? So I'm gonna give that a stir with a freakishly small wooden spoon, and I'm just gonna let those spices sit there steeping in that warm pan while I get my lamb mixture together. I think that actually might draw out extra flavor than if you just dump the spices on the meat. Can I prove it? Probably not, but I don't care. I'm gonna do it anyway. All right, set that aside to cool to room temperature and it's on to the lamb. In a bowl, I have one pound of ground lamb. Although I really had a pound and a quarter, but pretend it's a pound. And to that, I'm gonna add one cup of white rice. That's just regular California long grain rice. I'm gonna add some salt, lots of freshly chopped Italian parsley, some sliced almonds, which give it a very nice texture and taste. And then for a little sweetness, some dried currants, which are basically little tiny raisins. And if you can't find currants, of course you can use chopped up raisins. And at that point, we're gonna add our now cool to room temperature onion butter spice mixture. Just dump that in, and then we're simply gonna mix this until well combined. By the way, you know what the best part about doing a lamb video is? The puns. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry, that was a bad one. Now you can use your hands if you want, but this isn't the kind of thing you really have to worry about over mixing. These cabbage rolls are gonna braise for like an hour and a half. So they're gonna be very tender and delicious. So just mix it until it's combined and stop right there. At that point, simply cover it in plastic, throw it in the fridge and chill until needed. All right, so the filling's done onto the wrappers, which is of course cabbage leaves. You're gonna take a medium sized head of cabbage and you're gonna go around with a paring knife and very carefully cut out the core. I just make like 45 degree angle stabs into the bottom, going all the way around. And then you can pop that core out. And just so they come off a little easier, I like to trim a little more out of the center, just like that, all right? And then that's gonna go into a half filled pot of boiling water. It doesn't have to be covered, although it's probably easier if it is. I'm gonna throw the lid on. This is on high heat, of course. And what's gonna happen is that boils and steams, the leaves will start to fall off the head and you can pull those off as it happens. So pull a couple off, throw the lid on for another minute, pull a few more off. You basically need eight or nine nice large leaves, all right? Something like that. Very simple process, okay? So we're not worrying about cooking the cabbage, we just want the leaves separated so we can use them to roll our lamb mixture, which is the next step. So we're gonna pull our lamb out of the fridge. I like to shape it into eight or nine logs before I roll, so I know I have the same amount roughly going into each cabbage roll, all right? So I like to divide mine up. By now, the cabbage leaves should be cool enough to handle. I like to cut off just the bottom inch or two of that thick center rib. It's a little fibrous, right? That's optional, but I like to trim that out. I'm gonna place my lamb towards the bottom and then simply roll it up, tucking in the sides, All right? Not too loose, not too tight. Try to do it perfectly, just like that. So easy. All right, one more time. Put your lamb down towards the back. All right, tuck in the sides as you roll it forward, just like you're rolling a big old fat party burrito. And there we go. Our lamb rolls are done and ready to braise. I'm using a nice deep Dutch oven here, but anything deep with a tight fitting lid will work. I'm gonna line the bottom with a few extra cabbage leaves and then place our rolls in. Now I usually get eight because I use a pound of lamb. This time I had a little extra lamb, so I'm getting nine rolls. So this was a really tight squeeze, but it worked. I got them in there. But the recipe on Food Wishes is gonna be for eight rolls, so you should have a little more room. And yes, if you double the recipe, you can do two layers. So once those are placed in there, I'm gonna generously season with salt and pepper. I'm gonna add a couple bay leaves and then about a cup of any kind of crushed tomato product. This is just regular tomato puree, but a tomato sauce would work, just crushed whole tomatoes would work. And then some chicken stock or broth. You could use water, I guess, but I really like to use stock here if you have it. So I'm gonna pour that in. 
I'm going to give it the old shake a shake just to make sure it's all nicely settled. I'm going to top that with that other half an onion we saved. I'm just going to slice that, throw it over. And then last but not least, a few extra cabbage leaves over the top to sort of cover and protect everything. And that is ready for the oven. Throw the lid on. Make sure your oven is preheated to 350. And that's going to bake in the center of the oven for about an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and a half. And what you're looking for is the proverbial fork tender. And how do you know? Very simple. Take a fork, stick it in, and if it feels tender, you're done. Basically, we're just waiting for the rice to cook all the way, and you're ready to go. And by ready to go, I mean you're going to wait a half hour now. Sorry about that, but seriously, you have to put the lid back on and wait 30 minutes for this to finish being awesome. Then feel free to throw a couple rolls in a bowl, drizzle over some of that amazing broth, which by the way, I believe in this case is considered lamb basting. If you're feeling extra sexy, crumble a little bit of feta cheese on there, a little bit more parsley, and that is going to blow your mind as much as, you know, a cabbage-based meal will blow your mind. I highly suggest you use a spoon and not a fork for this. It is incredibly tasty. That rice is perfectly tender. It's soaked up all that aromatic spice and lamb flavor. You got a little bit of crunch and nuttiness from the almond, a little bit of sweetness from the currant, sort of balancing the acid from the tomato. Just a wonderful, homey, comforting, satisfying dinner, especially on a chilly night with some crusty bread. It doesn't get much better than this. So I really, really hope you give that a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info, as usual. And as always... Enjoy!